Hi, I am Vivek Rege and I will be speaking today on another common problem in small children which is known as BCG adenitis following BCG injection. Since BCG is usually given on the left upper arm, therefore the commonest region where you would get a BCG adenitis is in the left axilla. Next. Now this was a child which typically came with a swelling in the axillary region following BCG given about a month back. Now the cause for the BCG adenitis is a little bit controversial. In some cases it could be like a local infection which is part and parcel of the BCG injection or inoculation. Number two, it could be the BCG injection was given at a wrong instead of being given subdermally has been given subcutaneously and therefore it has spread and given reason to this BCG adenitis. Now what essentially BCG adenitis is that the lymph nodes draining the area where the BCG has been given sort of catch the BCG or the tuberculous bacilli and therefore the lymph adenopathy occurs. Now the commonest though may be in the axillary region however it can also come up in other regions like in the supraclavicular region or even anteriorly and therefore any swelling in the vicinity of the BCG injection coming up soon within a month, two or three months after having been given a BCG injection usually would make it a BCG adenitis. Now do all BCG adenitis require surgery? The answer is no. Most of the times this adenitis which is an inflammation and swelling of the lymph nodes draining the area where the BCG has been given may disappear on its own or with antibiotics and with anti-inflammatory and it makes sense to wait. Some people even insist on giving INH which is an anti-tuberculous therapy one, only one drug for a period of six weeks to see what is happening. Very often this may disappear or decrease. The only time when we need to do a surgical procedure is one, if it ruptures and there forms a sinus, therefore it is now a BCG sinus rather than a BCG adenitis or even if the swelling seems to be increasing or not decreasing after medicines or there is a softening seen or seen on ultrasound if required. If there is softening that means there is pus and if there is pus you need to take it out and therefore this is a classical cold abscess as they say because usually an abscess gives rise to spikes of fever, acute tenderness, severe pain, redness, none of which may be there but yet there will be pus on drainage. Like in this child, next, you could see that the swelling was pretty big, it was increasing in size, though the child was not spiking, you can see the BCG inoculation site also very clearly here on the left deltoid right near the uh, shoulder joint and this was also showing softening which means an abscess was forming, formed already and therefore there was no point in waiting next. So this abscess had to be drained and this is what was done. The abscess was being drained and after drainage this child was also put on antitubercular drug for a period of 6 weeks this child recovered fully and there has been no other problem. Next. This was the another child who had a large axillary abscess. Here you can see again this also needed to be drained. Next. Sometimes as I said the BCG adenitis may come up at an slightly abnormal position. This is almost in the supraclavicular region but nonetheless following BCG within a few months and the child is small there are high chances of this being a BCG adenitis. Again the same principles work that you need not operate in all of them. You can give a trial of medical therapy see whether it is um, responding. If it seems to be responding, if it is decreasing in size, there is no increase, no tenderness, no softening or no sinus, yes you can treat it conservatively. Next. Here you can see it much clearer. Now this was increasing in size and therefore we had to incise it and remove the pus as well as 
scrape out the lymph nodes which when were sent for histopathology turned out to be positive for tuberculosis and this child again was given a six weeks therapy of anti-tuberculous drugs. Thank you.